Hello, this is Nicole from Get Your Rock Out, talking to Ollie of Teresas at Sheffield Corporation. So it's lovely to talking to you again. How is the tour going so far? Pretty nice. Nice to be back in the UK. Yeah. Um, we did last fall five gigs, and uh, now with a different, bit different uh, routing. So, so uh, it's it's nice to be back. We've been here quite a few times, but yeah. and it always feels homey. Homey. I knew the way to the backstage. I kind of. <laughs> Remember that. Oh, that's, so that's the benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear you are trying to cover more places which you don't visit so often or have visited before on this tour. So how's that going? Has that been a success? Uh, yeah. Our, I think our the booking agent is doing good st- uh, <laughs> good job at that. Yeah. Uh, so we did London, Manchester, Nottingham, Glasgow, and. And fifth place that I can't remember right now, last fall, so now we're doing a bit bit different. So Newcastle, Southampton, Sheffield, Norwich, and, um, and Wolverhampton, yeah. So so that's nice. I think the, the longest that we did in the UK was uh, some years ago that when we did something like uh, 10 or 10. 12 days in the UK in a row. So obviously for a Finnish band, that's quite nice feat. I mean, like that, that we can actually pull it off with, with nice crowds as well. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy about that. I mean, the last tour was more of a UK tour, but this is quite a large European tour, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, 38, 38 mm. gigs. I'm, I'm looking forward to the Ukrainian... Kiev show, we should be playing some battle metal for those guys, and I think there's been something like 85 people killed, so maybe we'll see how we provide the soundtrack for that. We're also doing gigs in more peaceful countries, such as Germany and, and, well, the regular stuff. Uh, Spain, Italy, um, we should be going to Belarus. Um, Kind of like a regular, normal continental Europe. Yeah. Tour. Have you visited your home country, Finland, on this tour yet? We played um, five shows in in December, so this yeah. won't go there. Okay. Finland is kind of bad, distant way. I mean, you can't really bring your own tours there that much. I mean, well, we started from Sweden, but it always takes a ferry ride there, so it's always kind of like you, you normally reserve an extra day to get there and to get out. Mm-hmm. So obviously. Um, that's why it's more more expensive for bands to come there. Yeah. But we've done um, the the December shows we did with Enciferum, who we toured with last fall anyway. So we are from from same uh, living in the same uh, city basically. So yeah. it's not a big deal. Yeah, I must be very lucky when I'm looking down a band's tour date, like tour list of the dates and the countries, and then like most countries have like one or two dates, and then UK always is about like four or five. It's, I, I don't think it's it's for everyone like that. Mm. Uh, for for us, it is, and and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had a strong following here for quite a few years, so it it actually really really feels like I'm kind of coming to your second home. You have your Walker salt and vinegar chips and, and <laughs> double taps in in the UK uh, in the in the toilet and everything. <laughs> So the last time we spoke to Teresa, it was regarding the new album in 2013. Mm-hmm. So how has things been since then? How that you know has it the hype met up to your expectations? And um, yeah, has the album met the expectations? Well, that's a that's a very uh, I think it's a difficult album and and definitely not probably what people expected. Uh, the natural way would have been continue doing something big and bombastic <laughs> and. Instead, we uh, aimed for for that kind of like more stripped down production. It's kind of experiment. I can't really tell if that is a kind of like a sign of things to come or no. But it's kind of we we try to speed up the process a bit and not not kind of like be so super anal about all the small um, details so much because we, I mean, like if if it was up to us and 
we would live 140 years old or something like that, then we probably would spend five, six years on each album and obsessing with all the details and everything would be kind of like over tune, kind of like... Um, and of course, you, you tend to lose a bit of magic in the process as well yeah. because uh, if, if, if when you try every possible option, then sometimes... I mean, of course... I think we have a pretty solid discography already before this album, but it kind of tends to kind of it. Well, first of all, you you pay a lot of money to 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 spend time in studio and and obsessing over with details. But maybe we just wanted it more mobile and kind of like put a strict deadline on us. And and uh, there was more cooperation with uh, the songwriting and everything. Um, whether it was super successful experiment, not necessarily. I think, uh, yeah, definitely more difficult stuff there, and and not maybe your like the expected soundtrack for your for your live action role play stuff or something like that. But I think it's still an uh, interesting album, and and it's it's good to try different methods. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's it's done well, and I've enjoyed listening to it. Mm. And I reviewed it for Get Your Rock Out. Um, you seem a bit, what's the word? Hesitant. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I can't think of the word. No worries. Um, you seem to doubt, you know, the success of the ex- like experimental aspect of the album. How, well, why is that? It's not my favorite album. Okay. I, I can be blunt <laughs> about it. It's not my favorite album, and I don't have much to play there anyway. But um, we'll see how it goes. I, I think it's kind of like a, maybe even a necessary sidestep from the yeah. direction, kind of to to broaden the landscape and kind of even give a shock value to some fans, um, because I think already at this point of our career. 10 years from the debut album. I think there's a lot of kind of... Um, I, th- I think many many metal fans have kind of formed their opinion on tourists. And and sometimes that kind of... Th- that brand can be, of course, for your, for your uh, good, kind of like a strong thing, but also sometimes, I mean, like... Uh, people expect to know what tourists l- sounds like and, and tourists sound is like so I, I think in that sense it's it's good to we threw in something completely different stuff that kind of like if people listen to it uh makes you kind of like maybe reassess things a bit because it, i mean like um I, I think that kind of like this doesn't sound like tourists can be both super positive or super negative thing depending on the listener but i think it's a it's a necessary sidestep kind of like to to try different waters and 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 see what comes up next i personally did i I think two or three songs for the album and and i was kind of like missing up tempo uh, uplifting stuff there in the live set maybe i was thinking about that and and for example this as the yorkshire tea that we got as a present um uh, reminds us of the the song of, uh, No Good Story Ever Starts With Drinking Tea I think I was listening to some um, old school pop punk like Bad Religion or something like that and I was like yeah, I don't know. maybe this kind of uh, style could be could be fun to do and that was kind of a like quick process so kind of to, to challenge ourselves not to do the, the very kind of safe trio kind of three beat we instead go with some kind of like upbeat punk stuff and kind of like mix it up a bit good um it was the new album um to assess 2013 it is um quite a contrast to thinking back to battle metal Mm. and like in terms of instruments like i think battle metal is more orchestral and you had an accordion and different members. Where well, with Trosas thirteen, you've have there's a keyboard, and yeah, I think it's a bit less orchestral. But there was a bit of saxophone, I think, if I recall correctly. So sexy saxophone going yeah. on then. Well, yeah, times are different. I, I think it um, it would be pretty astonishing if if you 
were the same exact person with same mm. exact aesthetics after 10 years. If you do something when the guys were, what, 21, 22 when they started. So I think it kind of... Of course, if you find your magic recipe and, and you want to continue beating your death metal level with your magic recipe from from uh, until the end of times, then please go ahead. But I think many people also kind of mature and test new mm. stuff. I don't say that um, battle metal was kind of product of its time. Not not a. I, I think it's a good album, and and super good album for for a debut album. But I think kind of aesthetics and and many values and and production values tend to change or maybe you know even the technology um, develops in that time so there was a lot of synthesizer stuff kind of like uh, synthesizer orchestra sounds mm. then the Berenger way went very much like big orchestral stuff with orchestral samples and, and stand up and fight it even more so and with also kind of real instruments orchestral instrument so in that sense uh, yeah the uh, you know it's it's good to try out n- new stuff and mm-hmm. not, not just it would be very I, I think many bands tend to kind of like uh, start with they, they start with sequence and they go on pro tools and they open the the last template that they use you know like some super boring tech uh, metal band from I don't know Missouri or something like that and they might have even bought the you know the 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 guitar tone samples from their buddies in New York or something like that and then they put the same beat that they've always used and say play with the same guitar tone that everybody uses and kind of like to bring something else in that mix would be like whoa no 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 don't fuck it up so I think in that sense it's more interesting that you put a saxophone solo in yeah in middle of the song Although it kind of cringes me, even me still, but uh, kind of a very dualistic <laughs> point in that song. Yeah. yeah, you've got you've got to keep things, you know, changing to keep things exciting. And um, what would be your favorite album that you've released or worked on then, if you can say? Uh, my favorite. Uh, I think the Barrage Way is the most solid album. I think the, the Stand Up and Fight was also uh, interesting. I think the the Barrage Way was probably the kind of very very to the point. I it was really weird to to look at it later when everybody was telling it was a classic, and you were like, "Well, we just did a sophomore album," you know. Uh, but kind of like in res- retrospect, uh, it seems like the maybe the most compact thing for me. Uh, probably that, yeah. Yeah. What is your keyboard player situation at the moment? Casper uh, Mortison from Baron Earth is doing keyboards in this okay. uh, tour. It was we were old buddies, and he he uh, is doing the spring tours with us. Uh, yeah, Bob Engstrand, another interesting in, interesting change. But yeah, Bob was focusing on his cats and home life. And I, I think he has some kind of own project of his okay. uh, in Finland. I, he was basically kind of not, not feeling good touring. I'm not, not, not big drama, but I think he kind of... Uh, he, he's a bit older than us and he'd been... South America earlier with Coty Pelto and stuff like that. So, I I think he he realized at some point that he's he's missing, you know, more long mornings with newspaper, coffee, and petting a cat or something like that. More than kind of waking up in a in a nightliner in a in a new city. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, would you consider getting recording back into the band again? I don't. I don't. Oh, who knows, maybe there's a track that needs it in the future, but as for the live setting, I don't think so. I think kind of like, uh, ever since the Varangian Way, that was kind of the, the maybe the the folkiest album, and even yeah. that wasn't super, super duper folk metal album. But ever since that kind of, because there was like this huge amount of these copycat bands from whatever... Um, 
Central Europe, and everybody was kind of like, you know, let's take this. You know, so you have to have an accordion and maybe a bagpipe player and something like that. And kind of folk metal began this kind of. So you can say it's kind of like started to be a cliche and and I don't know maybe just composing for for accordion didn't didn't seem like an obvious choice at that point mm. and uh since uh since we we lost the accordion player in that point then it felt kind of like more natural option to go with with uh a bit something a bit similar a keyboard player I mean like you can do a lot of with Hammond and stuff like that but kind of transfer those things for keyboard rather than have accordion player in the band just because, you know. Yeah, it's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you fed up with playing Rasputin live yet? I, am I fed yeah. up with it? No, actually, it? no, I'm, I'm not too fed about it. Fed up with it. Uh, we had it, some tours we had that we kind of like, you know, we won't do it. Um <laughs> Because it's it's one of those things of obviously like every uh, you know there are a lot of bands who probably give their left arm for to have some something like that yeah. in their repertoire that people recognize. But of course, I mean like there's a there's always this uh, danger of of becoming the band that plays Rasputin mm. or something like that, even, and even more so when it's not even our own song, and you know with song song lengths like ours, it's it's kind of. Uh, at some point it felt stupid that we always have to sacrifice one slot for for a song that's not even ours and yeah. instead showcase something from from our repertoire let's see how it goes tonight we've sometimes if there's a good good mood and and a good party mode in the audience then it's it's nice to throw in i mean it's nothing to be ashamed of no. either uh i i think it it it's it's a kind of like nice cherry on top on a good gig <laughs> Yeah, I mean the cover itself. It's very good. Like it's very different and interesting, imagined yeah, com- compared to the original. Absolutely. But you have done a few other covers as well, like um, those with the days and Supernaut and was it Jethro Tull cover. Uh, yeah, uh, Broadsword. Yeah. We haven't ever played Broadsword live. No, would uh, you ever play any of those covers live? Because it always seems we to be did. We did uh, Supernaut. We did a, a couple of times. Yeah. I think we did in Sonosphere a couple couple okay. of years back. Uh, I think that might. Uh, be a nice addition maybe at some point um, I think we kind of were able to make it kind of our our version yeah. so it, it doesn't sound like just you know bad Black Sabbath yeah. cover band playing Black Sabbath covers instead of kind of like a nice tourist feeling to it so yeah that might be interesting yeah I think you should give it a go. I th- also think you should maybe try giving Gogol Bordello cover. Gogol Bordello cover? Yeah. What song? Now, the first one that comes to mind is Start Wearing Purple, but that is a very well-known song of theirs. I don't know if you should go see it. I don't remember the names. Time. I just remember they, they were talking about trans-Siberian sex toys and stuff yeah. like that. Some, <laughs> maybe that could be interesting. But then again, it's it's very gypsy. There's a lot of mm. this gypsy feeling to it. So maybe maybe I should grow a moustache or something like that. <laughs> If we ever play that. They, they have a violinist as well, so it would make sense, yeah. Yeah, do you need to get going? That's it. I think, yeah, he kind of asked us to wrap it. Okay. But, uh, last question. Yeah. Last question. Um, what could you say is your mission on this tour? Mission on this tour? To survive and not be killed in Kiev, probably. <laughs> you know. um, I'm not sure how, how good am I, I am in, in catching Molotov cocktails. Gonna find out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, well, of course, that's uh, I don't know. Maybe the Civil War needs a soundtrack. I don't know. No, that that's nothing to really laugh about. It's a, it's a mm. uh, very severe situation, of course. There, I think uh, thirty eight gigs is enough to kind of survive itself. Um, we have a, a U.S. tour coming up this spring. Yeah. We're going with Korpiklani doing the the, the pagan fest run there. And and then some summer gigs. So, I think we we uh, complete this one, and I I think we would be even ready to go back to drawing board after that. So and, and see what what kind of stuff will be will be coming up next. But um, I think I'm going to stuff myself with haggis and 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 soda vinegar chips. Uh, sorry, crisps. 
uh, and and uh, something like that. And have good shows with great UK crowds. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for talking to us. I look Thank forward you. to seeing you. This one.